and the board meeting continues. <laughs> we are a little ahead of schedule. President Tollefson. Did we lose him? I suspect some people may have disconnected. Um, maybe we should take a short break and I'll email everyone and remind them to get back on the Zoom link. Yeah, let's plan to come back at 11 to check in with the president and see what he wants us to do. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, we left off, I believe, with talking about following the science revision of volunteer vaccination rules at the Washington State Bar Association, right? On the agenda. I think this is Executive Director Nevitt's presentation to make. All right, thank you. You can find the materials in the packet um, at page 522. Um, given some of the changing public health guidance, I was asked to facilitate the board's discussion about whether it would like to revisit the vaccination policy that was approved uh, August 21st. So in the memo, you can find some information from uh, the Centers for Disease Control in terms of their current recommendations, um, as well as some information about the status of uh, Washington counties in terms of community risk level as defined by the Centers for Disease Control. Uh, you can also find some information about current guidance from the Washington State Department of Health and the governor's office, as well as in King County, uh, and also the current status of the Supreme Court's order. Um, I will let you know, so we still have uh, a vaccination requirement in place for employees. We have not um, contemplated changing that as of yet. However, uh, as I mentioned yesterday, we are changing, uh, we are lifting our mask requirement at the WSBA office. And for any events in King County as of the 12th, uh, and we will uh, just continue to monitor public health guidance and, and we will just be consistent with what uh, local public health authorities are saying um, as we plan events around the state. Anybody wanna share any discussion points? Past President Shaketti has got his hand up, followed by Alex Stevens. So I, um, in anticipation of this, uh, this discussion, um, I'm a little concerned about having our discussion now because we did tell everyone that we would be doing this tomorrow at noon. Um, nevertheless, here's we're having this discussion now. I've texted uh, Governor Adewale to see if he can join us um, sooner than that, and uh, hopefully he can. When I saw that this was going to be on our agenda, um, I recall back when, when we were envisioning the first policy, um, it, was, it was started, a discussion was started um, by Chief Justice Gonzalez. We talked about the court's uh, mandates for vaccinations. And so before we proceeded forward with trying to adjust our own, um, I was curious as to what the court's intent was with regard to their own policies. And so I had a conversation with Chief Justice Gonzalez and two things stand out for me from that conversation um, for me. One, that uh, the uh, Chief Justice Gonzalez told me the pandemic is not over. And he's absolutely correct on that. And that too, the court is continuing its current mandates for masks and vaccinations um, through the summer, and then they'll reevaluate. And quite frankly, I don't see any reason for us to depart now early, in my opinion, um, from continuing to require vaccinations. And in fact, we passed that policy uh, prior to boosters, and I would be an advocate for requiring also the boosters 
which the CDC recommends uh, to continue the uh, resistance to this virus that has plagued us for the last two years. Um, a note, as I've often done, that uh, our sister state to the south, Oregon, just passed its own policy uh, a few weeks ago as they're opening up their headquarters and operations to um, resume meetings for their volunteers and for their employees. And they did pass a policy that requires not only the vaccinations, but also the boosters. Um, and, you know, I hope that we can perhaps do the same. It's, it's time to update our policy and make it stronger for the safety of not only our volunteers, but also our staff. Thank you. So I have a question. When was the last time you had a conversation with the chief? <clears throat> this conversation was about, I don't know, when did we go to Pacific County? Was that a week ago? One week ago. And of course, you know, uh, what we've got Governor uh, Boyd here. Did you have to show a vax card, but Governor Boyd, before you did your oral arguments up in Seattle? Yes, I did. They checked it. I, it's on the website that you have to bring it. And then oh, when wow. I checked in, I had to show it to them. Yeah, and I don't know what, what they're doing at different superior courts around the state, whether they're all, you know, I wonder how the criminal defendants, who I'm pretty sure there's a large majority of them haven't been vaccinated at all or are uh, being treated in the in their access to justice. I'm just, I'm just curious about if we were setting, you know, a, a policy where you've got different standards for different groups and uh, how that impacts the access to justice and a few other um, social issues. But we've got some hands up, uh, Governor Stevens. Yeah, I guess, uh, unfortunately, we didn't pose this question to the court when they were here, but my my view is since, I mean, because we have just this variety of different approaches, um, I think it's a wiser course to follow what our Supreme Court is doing and not step outside of, of that so that we too are adding to the variety of different approaches and uh, so I'm I'm wondering um, if it's a if it's appropriate and I don't know what action you need, um, Tara, what you're calling for, but I guess I would I would um, want us to be in alignment with the court and actually specifically ask the court where they're at and if if they're taking the position that um, uh, that they're they're not going to make a change until perhaps this summer. I just think it's a, it's a, um, a more appropriate way to go about having a, at least a uniform approach as opposed to being all over the place and all over the map or outside of what our Supreme Court is uh, doing. Um, anything else that you'd like to add there, Governor Stevens? No? Uh, I see that our advancement director, Kevin Plachy, has his hand up, followed by Mike Cherry, followed by Carla Higginson, followed by our executive director. Thank you, President Tollison. Uh, as you're discussing the volunteer policy, I'd just like to flag that uh, we are in the process right now of working with some of the sections on their mid-year events. And these events are usually larger, they have sometimes over 100 people, close to 200 sometimes. I don't know what the attendance will turn out to be for some of these, but one of our sections in particular, uh, ELUL that I'm working with right now on holding their mid-year in person has asked to increase the uh, vaccination protocols for their specific event. And the increase is to add the requirement of a booster. Um, we did say that for attendees, if they want to strengthen the, the procedure that's, that we laid out for attendees, that they could overlay it if they wanted to, but they'd need an executive committee vote to do so. Um, but 
<clears throat> I guess I would just flag that uh, as we're working with the sections on some of these larger events, they have concerns about safety that are that are pretty prevalent and uh, and are requesting uh, for their specific events some stricter protocols. Uh, so as you're thinking about, I know the volunteer policy is a board policy. So um, I would just like to flag that conversation we're having with the sections because if say you rescind the volunteer policy, then my question becomes, if we hold these uh, mid-year events for sections, can we, now we are not requiring our volunteers who are participating in those events to be vaccinated. So, um, so I'm just flagging it because it's our first foray into some of these bigger in-person events. And there is um, some concern around safety that still exists. And, uh, and, and even to the extent that the sections want to strengthen the protocols beyond what the bar itself uh, has in place. Thank you. We have the chair of the practice of law board here to share. Uh, I really, I want to make this statement as a, just a member, not as the chair. Um, I would just ask that the board of governors in creating these policies, keep in mind that there is a population of people who uh, are not able to take a booster shot. And I am one of those. And the medical community is reluctant to give me a letter stating that because their policy is, is that people should be boosted. So I'm going to have to continue to be masked. I will have to continue to be masked in public for a long time. But what I would ask is, is that I agree that the policy should be set and the policy should protect the people's safety. But we will have essentially a... Um, a, a Disabilities Act kind of issue where people will have to have accommodations and the accommodations will likely be that meetings will have to be hybrid, both in person and available on Zoom. And so I just ask that that be part of the policy so that those of us, and again, I am not asking for the, the rules to be lessened. We need to protect people, but we need to accommodate those for whom a booster is, is not a viable option. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have Governor Higginson followed by Executive Director Nevitt followed by Nancy Hawkins. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Well, first of all, I do want to remind everyone that this policy that we adopted was not in response to the court's um, own mandate about its own employees. It was written late at night. We had less than 12 hours notice. We had almost no debate and it was simply adopted. I don't consider that necessarily a thorough vetting of the proposed policy in terms of would it be a good idea or would it not be a good idea. I think it's appropriate to revisit it as a result. <clears throat> I will say that in San Juan County, we do not require vaccinations to, to attend court um, and they have reopened the courtrooms. Uh, there's the United States District Court for the Western District of Washington issued a general order uh, on March 3rd of this year, um, the Chief uh, Ju uh, Judge Ricardo Martinez issued this order indicating that um, in light of the uh, average daily number of individuals um, testing positive for COVID, who, which have rapidly decreased, uh, hospitalizations have fallen significantly uh, the surge of cases and hospitalizations predicted by local public health officials and attributed to the arrival of Omicron variant has clearly ended. And advancement in the number of uh, vaccinated individuals and affect medical treatments. Uh, he notes that federal and local officials across the nation have began to lift mask requirements, social distancing requirements, and other preventative measures. He calls out that on February 28th, Governor Inslee announced that state indoor mask requirement would be lifted as of March 11th, which was quickly echoed by public health departments of King and Pierce County. With all of that, um, the Federal District Court for the Western District of Washington um, has uh, not renewed their general orders, which required masking and other things. And they indicate that all trials can proceed in person, uh, courtroom use for uh, civil, 
or criminal matters um, is up to the discretion of the presenting judge, face masks are not required, um, so forth and so on. And I don't believe that they have, there's no mention whatsoever in here of requiring vaccination cards. So with that, I do think that appear, I would suggest that we could be guided by someone who's clearly looked into this more than we have. I don't know that any of us are experts on public health uh, crises or have researched this particular issue. But what I see in this uh, order from the court is me to conclude that it would be entirely appropriate for us to uh, lift our vaccine mandate uh, and, proceed, and let people proceed as they wish. If they're concerned about attending an event in person, then let them attend uh, wearing a mask or, or a, via video conference. That would be what anybody would like to do to protect themselves no matter what. So my suggestion is, and I'm moving, that we lift the vaccine requirement and the mask mandate effective immediately for all volunteers of the WSBA. Could you state that one more time for me? I didn't get it all. I, I'm moving that we lift the vaccine mandate for all volunteers of the WSBA effective immediately. Did your motion also include mask? I thought it did. Uh, oh, I said vax. I just said vaccine mandate. Not here in a second. Well, let's uh, move on uh, to, I believe, uh, Executive Director Nevitz up, followed by Nancy Hawkins, followed by Grant Williams Ruth, followed by Governor Boyd. Thank you. I just wanted to respond to something that Governor Stevens said and also something that um, Michael Cherry said. Governor Stevens had asked, you know, what, what I need from you all. And I just want to be clear that I'm not asking anything or proposing anything. I was asked to provide some information for the discussion. So if you choose to make a change, we will execute on that. If you choose not to make a change, that's there's no act there's nothing to be done we will continue to um, execute the policy that we have and I also just wanted to underscore uh, Michael Cherry's points about accommodations and of course uh, we are providing accommodations we are always required to provide accommodations to make our meetings accessible uh, and I think that's critical and that is something that we will continue to do Uh, hello, Nancy Hawkins. How are you? You're up. Fine, thanks. So um, this is a perplexing topic and one that the family law section has dealt with. Uh, not so much um, what the policy should be, because regardless of the policy, people are going to make individual decisions about whether to attend events or, or volunteer in this um, unusual time. We're one of those sections that has our large mid-year uh, set for this summer, uh, this year. Uh, it's in July, uh, because it typically um, covered usually the Juneteenth weekend. And so we've moved ours um, to July this year. Uh, we've been struggling with this issue, whether we should be in person or hybrid and what that would mean. And um, did sort of an informal survey of people, and it became clear that re regardless of a policy, there were a, a large number of people that would not attend if it was in person. And that has led to uh, hard conversations because what good, in, in some ways, it's always good to get together to for people to talk in person, but what if we bring them all together to Vancouver or Wenatchee and, or, or some other locale, but all the speakers are appearing remotely. Uh, people are gonna feel cheated. People are not, you know, they don't wanna travel somewhere to sit at a desk looking at their computer. Uh, even though a lot of you are, have traveled and are sitting and looking at your computers. So, um, 
I think the people who have who are going to get vaccinated have gotten vaccinated or who or who are able to recognizing uh, Mr. Cherry's comments. Um, so I'm not sure that the vaccine requirement gets us any more people vaccinated, although that would certainly be valuable in my opinion. Um, and I don't know that you're going to get more people interested in wearing masks unless they're required. But there are a lot of us that are going to wear masks. We're going to get boosted if another booster shot becomes available, whether it's required or not. And I think those um, lines have been drawn and they've been drawn for some period of time already. Uh, but I do think that um, we should be uh, that when we can't really decide what we should be doing based on other, other issues, a safe approach may simply be to follow whatever the Washington Supreme Court is doing for itself. Um, but uh, it's, a, it's a difficult subject, but I, I know a number of people who have uh, been ill in the last several months who, you know, people my age and older are still terrified of COVID, uh, perhaps in a way that younger people are not. So um, good luck with the discussion. Thank you very much. Governor Williams Ruth. Thank you, Mr. President. I dropped into the chat uh, a CDC website. Uh, for those on the phone, I apologize for not being able to share that with you, but it's the COVID tracker of the various variants. And you go back to December 4th, 2021, and you'll see a big, almost like, 99% was Delta, and there was nothing about Omicron. And then you watch Omicron explode. Well, go to the far right, and you'll see there's another strain of Omicron, BA.2, that has grown steadily since, let's see, I'm turning, let's see, from February 1st showed up, uh, January 15th, then all the way through 3.5.22. And it's now what's moving across Canada. And it's now at 13.6% of the new cases in the United States. So the fact that the political will regarding masks is not there, great. I was forced into travel last year, as you all know, for family reasons. I never got COVID. I will probably never step foot on an airplane again without a mask. I don't like the fact that we're getting rid of our mask mandates, but it is what it is. And I'll tell you that for the section of mine that I liaised to that had an in-person meeting in, in this last year, they did have the accommodation for the, um, the simulcast. And it was different than our Board of Governors meetings because it was the one screen uh, at the front of the room and, and not all of us on our own individual. Because I'm so used to what we do for the Board of Governors meetings. I hadn't even seen what other... Uh, sections or, or groups were doing to have their definition of hybrid. So it worked well. And, and I um, am not sure if their mid-year is going to be uh, virtual or not. Um, I believe they are actually planning on having it in person in June, in the beginning of June. But I, I believe that it's, you know, I also looked up when I saw this was on the agenda, I finally went and actually pulled from the Washington State Department of Health the vaccination requirement for children to go to school and to be enrolled in a public school to get into kindergarten, a child must have 20 doses of various vaccines from polio to uh, the Tdap to MMR. Um, and so I, I am not at all believe, and again, I just, and again, I'm an estate planning attorney, so I deal with death and dying all the time. I was at a client's funeral a week and a half ago, and I'm going to one in two weeks. People who are unvaccinated, who thought they were fine, who thought this is a hoax, and now they're dead. So, and, and my mother is one who cannot get anything, and I am, you know, I actually called the executive director of her facility and said, just please make sure your staff knows that the governor's order releasing um, masks does not apply to hospitals or long-term care facilities. 
And when I come and bring over my mom's Costco this weekend, I better see every single staff member wearing their mask appropriately because my mom is a person who will die if she gets COVID. So I am, and, and let's not forget, we had one of our own who had nearly died. I mean, I, we, this is a personal issue for this board. And I do not believe that it is time for us to do it. I do not think that we should even tie it to the Supreme Court. I think that this is something that should be, you know, looking at, let's, let's actually look at the science. And the science is not that this is going away. It's that it's continuing to evolve. And we're just going to have, I mean, good, this morning, Cairo TV had a, a graph that showed, you know, when there were 67 positive COVID cases, then in December, there was 2,056 per day. And now we're back down to, I think it was 76 this morning. Great. So we're between the waves. How wonderful it is that we're going to now just run out, change everything, increase the exposure risk, and be back to where we were. So I, I am not going to make the motion at this time, but I would absolutely support the motion to add even the booster requirement for fully vaccinated. I think that's just the way the society is going is we, for those who can, and again, our policy has the exemptions written into it. And I think for those who can, we should move in that direction, not making it less. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. I think we've got uh, Governor Boyd up next, followed by Governor Stevens. Thank you. Um, personally, I'm not comfortable lifting the vaccine mandate right now. I, uh, went, I've been enjoying attending events in person. One of the reasons why I think me and other people feel at least somewhat safe to do so is because we have this vaccine mandate. And I know that everyone in the room uh, that I'm in the room with is vaccinated. Um, I like that that gives uh, us at least some sense of security. I'm not ready to get rid of that yet personally. Um, I also, while I don't think we necessarily need to tie our decision to the Supreme Court, uh, as long as the Supreme Court has their vaccine mandate, I don't think we should be lifting our vaccine mandate. Uh, I don't think we need to necessarily tie our decision to the court because I think if the court lifts their mandate, then we can have another discussion about, a, about whether we should lift ours or not. I think it would be entirely appropriate for us to continue our vaccine mandate even if the Supreme Court lifts theirs, because we are a different entity. We have, we do different things. We interact with the public in different ways. Um, however, given the fact that the Supreme Court uh, basically directed us uh, to put a vaccine mandate, from my understanding, it was the, the uh, Supreme Court's direction um, without maybe being explicit was basically, we have the authority to make you do this. Do you want to do this on your own or do you want us to do it for you? Um, and we chose to do it on our own, which I think was a wise decision. I don't think it's now wise to uh, take back um, the decision we made earlier and now disagree with the, with the Supreme Court by lifting ours prematurely. So I, with that, I would move that we not make any changes to our policy at this time and that we not raise this issue again until uh, after the Supreme Court has made a decision um, to raise their, uh, to rescind their vaccine mandate. And then at that time, we can discuss whether it would be appropriate for the WSBA to do so as well. Second. Okay, you've got a motion and a second. Um... Could I have the executive director go ahead and read it back so everybody knows what it is before we have further discussion on it? Governor Boyd moved that we not make any changes to our vaccination policy at this time and that we not raise the issue again until the court has lifted its vaccination mandate. Is that accurate, Governor Boyd? Yes, thank you. Okay, we've got uh, Governor Stevens followed by uh, President-elect Dan Clark. Thank you, Mr. Yours, Governor Stevens. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, so I have a couple of questions for both Tara and and Glennis. And, and the, the question really is in the whole area of vaccinations, um, have we updated? We just talk about the two or are we saying 
or is our policy now vaccinated and boosted? Um, and I'd like to know that in terms of if we need to, uh, or if I need to make a, a, a proposed amendment to add uh, up-to-date vaccinations or vaccination and boosted. Um, and I just share with uh, all of you, at least my perspective, which is, as you know, uh, when I got COVID, um, I am a firm believer that because I was vaccinated and boosted and and so was my wife, that uh, while it was rough, it didn't require uh, going to the hospital. It did not require having a additional source of oxygen. Um, and I think that's important. And even as I look at the various examples Examples that were given, the examples that uh, Governor Higginson gave. Uh, I am not going to overlook the fact that um, these things are, are are changing because more and more people are getting vaccinated, and more and more people are um, uh, are, are wearing a mask. And uh, those who aren't uh, actually share in the benefit of of it not being as prevalent as any place else. So, but I'd like to know from, from Tara and from Linus, uh, if it passes as is, is our policy just the two shots or, you know, what is our policy? I can start and then I'll turn it to Glennis. Um, so our policy references being fully vaccinated and, and we're getting that definition from somewhere else. And the current definition does not include a booster. It only includes the first and second shots and then the requisite period of time. Um, but I will turn to Glennis who may have more information about the source of our definition. And I think because the definition is external, if that changes, then our policy implementation would change as well. Yes, you're absolutely right. Um, our current policy and definition for fully vaccinated is the two dose. We are not requiring a booster at this time. And we take our guidance, Julie Shanklin and I actually went back and forth on this topic uh, quite a bit the other day. And we looked at the Department of Health, LNI, CDC, King County. I mean, we looked at numerous, numerous um, sources. And uh, I think I don't see anything to the contrary. Um, and Julie, please chime in if you have found something since, but I don't see anything that contradicts our current policy. So as of today, um, fully vaccinated is the two dose or one dose if you've got the J&J. &J. Okay, I've got, more, oh, yeah, I've got more hands up. Let's see, um, Governor Stevens, did you, did you have your hand up again? Yes, I would like to amend uh, the motion to include uh, vaccinated and boosted. I I'll take second that, that Alan. And, 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 and that's what I, I was going to do in, in chat. Um, yeah, so thank you. Okay, so let's see, we got a chat here that I should probably read. Uh, uh, Governor-elect Dan Clark says, I would like to offer what I hope will be a friendly motion to amend Governor Boyd's motion, which would be to require booster shots to be obtained and kept current in accordance with public health guidelines. I think that is important, especially for those who receive the J&J &J shot. If we want to, following the science, it shows that there is a rapid decrease over time in vaccination effectiveness. Did I read that correctly, Governor? Yeah, yeah, you did. And, and, and if I may, I mean, I'll, okay, I'll be the first to say I'm biased about this issue is almost dying from COVID and the, the two weeks that I spent in the uh, ICU. Um, certainly, I personally would like to see us, I, I mean, still have masks. I mean, I, I, I think that makes sense. I think it's reasonable. I think it's you know, we're thinking now, hey, you know, the stuff's dropping, so woo, right? Well, we thought that, I, I mean, now twice. And, and, and so you get, I mean, yeah, yeah, so thank you. I'll take that as a friendly amendment. Does the second accept? Second. 
Okay, uh, I think I'm up to uh, Governor Adwale. I hope I am. Um, um, Mr. President, I'm sorry that I had to go and just came back. I joined the argument. Um, I joined the um, conversation midway. Um, I, if you don't mind, can I request that Governor Igisin? I, I, I didn't have any way to know what exactly um, was she said. Could you let her restate her, her, her statement before I joined, before I voted, so that I will, I will be well informed while voting? I just wanted to know the argument against this motion or any point made um, in contradiction to this. Sorry, I don't. I hope you don't mind, Governor Higginson, if you could restate your point again. Governor Higginson. I'm sorry, I, I apologize. I wasn't listening for a minute. What was that? Did you, uh, you made, um, you, did you speak to this issue? I wanted to hear what you had to say to this issue. Sorry, I just joined. Oh, no, that's all right. Um, Yes, what I what I what I had said was that um, that I well I had made a motion which did not get seconded to um, end the vaccine mandate effective immediately, and the reasoning was in part based on the Western District of Washington's uh, March third of twenty twenty two order, which recited uh, many statistics on public health departments having uh, released the mask mandates and so forth and reopening the courts. And so I had said that given all that rationale, it seemed appropriate for us to just release the mask, or excuse me, release the vaccine mandate um, at this time as well. But uh, that, was, uh, that was what I said. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. President, uh, I'm ready now. Do we have any other hands up? Did I get everybody? Did I miss anybody? Everybody got their oh, hands up. Amazing. Okay, so I guess we're ready to vote on this one. Do the old roll call vote. Uh, Governor Abel. Governor Adwale. Aye. Governor Angelville. Aye. Governor Boyd. Aye. Governor Clark. Aye. Governor Couch. Aye. Governor Dresden. Aye. Governor Higginson. No. Governor McBride. No. Governor Peterson. Yes. Governor Pertzer. Aye. Governor Sayani. Aye. Governor Stevens. Aye. Governor Williams Ruth. Aye. Is that a yes? Correct. Aye. Did I miss anybody? So I have 11 yeses, two noes. One not voting, is that what you have, uh, Executive Director, Secretary? Yes. Motion passes. Thanks everyone for at least discussing this and seeing where you are. Um, I've had family members die of COVID here recently. I had my one of my brother-in-laws died. Of course he was a ardent anti-vaxxer. But one of the things about masks is that they all have a side effect too. I have a son who had to wear a mask in his work environment for 12 hours a day, several days in a row, ended up with a staph infection in his lips. Took four weeks to clear up, three doctors to figure out how to treat it. Staph infection in the face is something that can go to the brain and kill a person much faster than COVID. So there are all sorts of uh, things that people have to worry about when it comes to masking and all this kind of stuff. Um, okay, Governor Stevens, you got your hand up for some reason? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Which is, um, I would hope we'd all understand that uh, this is a topic that we will need to revisit again and again. And I would actually hope that um, uh, at our next meeting uh, that the executive director and the uh, 
Well, the staff uh, give us an update on uh, both the current state of things, how it's being applied and whether or not we need to take further action. I don't think this is a one-off forever. Um, although I would also point out, and I, I appreciate your comment, um, Mr. Mr. President, um, but I, I also want to just put on the record that uh, as we look at this particular um, virus, um, we are not done and never have been done, for example, with measles. And we have had to learn how to, by, by the way, have everybody almost vaccinated so that it doesn't crop up again. Um, I don't think these viruses um, just kind of care what we think about how long they are prevalent. Um, and we need to continue to watch this one because of its, um, its significant toll on all of us understanding that. Um, I think one of the things I heard from everybody and I'm a firm believer in um, staying with some sort of hybrid approach as we go down the path uh, for a long period of time because we are not out of the woods yet. And, uh, uh, and I don't know when we will be, but there, there are ways in which we can do everything we can all the time to make accommodations as best we can. And we need to continue to do that. 